The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sam Tamina, blog of Ron the OAA, one of the hosts between Terminas on Orient Native Television, also the host of Last Three Brain Cells as well. Welcome those on the local voice on SoundCloud and also those watching on Orient Native Television as well. Um, we got a lot to talk about this week, obviously, districts being released and everything. Um, we we got my um, annual football coaches talking to um, this, this um, starting with... Um, with the great Berkeley football coach, Sean Shields. Coach, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Sammy. Thanks for having me on. Yep. Um, a lot to talk about. I mean, like, obviously with Berkeley, um, you know, Berkeley sports, I mean, like, obviously you look at um, softball winning a district title, um, volleyball winning a district title, and then girls basketball pulling off probably one of the biggest upsets that I've seen in a long time, um, winning in girls basketball. Um, what are your thoughts on um, – on Berkeley winning the um, winning the um, district titles and uh, and those three sports, we would talk your team. Uh, I mean, it's it's great for the school. Um, you know, uh, last year we had uh, Coach Butash uh, was part of our JV staff. Billy's a really good dude. You know, um, you know it's the work he's doing with those girls is awesome. Um, you know the the volleyball team everything is just uh, basketball it's it's great our ad uh taylor horn he started a little uh new trend in in his office whenever a team brings a district title home uh he takes him in his office and uh has the entire team sign his wall it's a pretty cool thing and that you know things starting to fill up pretty quick hopefully we're able to add our names to it uh here eventually um when you look at you guys this year i mean like obviously you know last season of course you guys um had some really i mean you had a really good year i mean obviously you had a lot of experience um lost some really tough games i mean close games I and mean, you lost the bloopy hills you lost to troy um on a field goal and then of course um Last, and then, of course, the postseason game against Water Vermont. Um, but I think the game that really was the one that really that really got you guys um, made a statement was that game against the Boney Clarenceville when you guys went down there and won that game on the road. And that was an undefeated team. Um, talk about last season a little bit um, with you guys, you know? Yeah, no, um, you know, last year was was a, a, a good special group that we had going. Um yeah, you know, I looked it up. Um, it's the least amount of points that uh, Berkeley's allowed since 1995. Wow. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, we we had a, a, a really strong defense last year and an offense that uh, that would back us up. You know, we 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 uh, averaged uh, 13 under 14 points a, a game uh, throughout the season. So uh, allowed. Um, you know, which now we, we have to replace nine of 11 starters on defense from that, from that team. Um, but you know, the Clarenceville game last year, uh, you know, I told the boys before the game that, you know, this, this is a playoff atmosphere, you know, it was their homecoming that, you know, it, great battle back and forth. We scored on offense, defense. They are a, an onside kicking team, uh, every single time we wound up taking one of those back to the house. You know, we, we, we played a complete game there and, uh, you know, our Hunter Robertson being able to knock down the, the game winning field goal for us was huge that uh, the boys responded well and, uh, you know, showed their toughness in that one. Yeah, I remember that game really well. I, and I did say um, last year, I remember the pod last year that I said that I said that you if you guys win that game, I expected, you know, what I mean, you would have a really it would be you guys would this would be a special group and I did and I did mean that. I mean like when you look at last year, I mean like you guys made the playoffs. I mean like you took on Waters Vermont in the first round. I know they got a very good quarterback in Caleb Osborne. Um when you took on Mott, um what was your um you know and, and then what what were your thoughts going into that game against Waters Vermont? Um you know that uh that you know as long as we stopped their ground attack that we would be all right um but that we would need to put points up and um you know that's you know the boys fought their their butts off for it um 
Yeah, that's uh, all three of our losses last year. Um, I mean, Bloomfield was 10 to 7. Uh, Troy was 13 to 10. And then, you know, Mott was 13, 13 going into uh, overtime, into overtime, you know, and it's, you know, the, just the, for some reason, the lack of being able to score, um, you know, it, it caught up to us, you know, um, they, they were a big tough nose football team. They were a little bit bigger than us up front size wise, but you know, the, the boys pushed back and kept fighting and, uh, you know, I was very proud of the guys and, that quarterback of theirs, uh, Caleb Osborne. Yeah. Yep. You know, he got loose on us in OT and, uh, you know, was able to, uh, to put it away for him and they wound up with the district title. So, you know, it's, uh, hopefully going into this year, you know, learning experiences for those guys coming back. Cause we've got another good senior group this year. Um, you know, that uh, we, we have to be able to put points up. Um, talk about this year's team. I mean, like, obviously when you look at, you guys, your strength obviously gonna be your ground attack, um, really high on your running game. Um, but you're having you're having, you're having to replace the quarterback this year. Um, you know, I'm very curious to see how your quarterback competition has been going. I mean, you run. I mean, like your, I mean, like your line is gonna be very solid. I think. Um, you got um, but you did say your defense. You got to replace nine of them starters. Um, give us a recap. Give us a little early preview of what you guys have like coming back or like um like players to watch and on all that um yeah i mean the quarterback uh battle right now it's between us uh, the junior sonny cadlitz and uh senior max wallstead um mm-hmm. you know sonny he's you know he, he can sling the ball around like no other um you know size wise we're, we're trying to work with him a little bit he, you know he's a wrestler so he's got some scrappiness to him mm-hmm. um but you know I, I think sonny's weighing in like 160 right now so we're a little concerned about the size. Uh, Max um, Wallstead, who who got to get in a few plays last year, quarterback for us, played a lot of defense. Um, you know, Max, you know, is about six one, about two twenty, bigger guy, can you know run the ball a little bit better. Um, you know, but uh, we've been going seven on sevens. Both guys are looking good. It's it's going to be a good spot and the nice thing is, is we have two guys that you know if something happens another one can pop in and, and carry the offense a little bit um you know that being said by far the strength of, of both sides of the ball is going to be our line um david rollins I've, I've heard a lot about him good basketball player good athlete actually yep, county county good. champion shot put. yep as a as a junior mm-hmm. um you know um you know rollins has a few uh few offers right now Dawkins has a couple uh Cameron Knight is another you know one of our six three linemen it's crazy to say at Berkeley that we have all these you know big goon linemen um but uh you know Christian Tubbs um you know John Passon our our line is is really going to carry us this year especially with the backs we have with Savad Daniels and Myron Dover back there um you know, it's I, I like, you know, we brought on a new OC this year, um, you know, and he wants to be as even 50-50 as possible. But, you know, I've looked at him like, hey, Joe, man, <laughs> we've got the horses, just run the ball. So um, that I think that's going to carry us pretty far this year is just the talent that we have on our line and, and the guys that are going to be able to run the rock. Anytime you have a very good line, that always means good, a great season, obviously. Um, you did say, you did mention your defense. I mean, you have to replace nine of 11 starters. Um, when you look at, um, you know, when you look at the division you're in, I mean, like, you know, um, you know, replacing nine starters, that's going to be very difficult, coach, to um, say the least, especially losing that type of balance from last year on that side of the football. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, um, you know, Henry Pennington was honorable mention all statement, a linebacker last year. Um you know, he's, he was a three-year varsity starter. Jake Demzlowski, three-year starter, was all league at corner. Uh, ben Maurice, uh, him and his brother Zach are both going to play ball at KZU this year. You know, he's another all-league guy. Um, you know, it's, uh, our D-line, you know, it, it's going to be tough to replace, but, the same, you know, we're going to have to double up a little bit more than we did last year, which is mm-hmm. going to hurt, um, you know, but we need some of these uh, upcoming juniors to come and step up and, and fill some roles, which we think we have. Um, 
but you know, it's, it's guys got to be conditioned in shape. And, uh, I think we got some guys to replace, you know, Nolan Wesner, uh, should be a pretty good spot for us in there to, you know, try to fill in Henry's shoes. And, mm-hmm. um, Savad's going to play a little bit of corner this year to help us out in the secondary. So, we, we've got guys that can come in there and do the job. You know, it's just molding them and meshing them together because basically this, you know, this entire junior class last year was our offense. And uh, now they're seniors. Now now it's time to step over and play the fun side of the ball. And when you look at, you know, when you look at obviously program strength, you you did mention to me like last year when we were on the pod um, together, um, that was going to be a concern for you guys. And, you know, when you look at um, – you look at it here, you know, you have a lot of guys going two ways. I mean, like, sometimes it can be very difficult for guys to go two ways. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, a little bit with the program right now is the sophomore class numbers aren't that great. Um, you know, we're looking for, like, the magic number of 18 from the sophomore class. It's just the two COVID years kind of were a little bit of a hit to us. Um, and, uh so as of now, the, the sophomores are going to be up on varsity with us unless we hit that magic number and then help them out with some juniors and everything else. Um, you know, we've got it's, – it's great. We've got a 30-man freshman class coming in. That's good. I, no, it's it's huge for us. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to do them a disservice of, here, go play against some sophomores, maybe some juniors on JV. I'm going to get them a freshman schedule, let them play other freshman teams, you know, and let those guys develop. So – you know, depending on uh, what happens with the sophomore class, we might be able to get some help from the sophomores and juniors that uh, are going to be a practicing and playing with us up on varsity. I mean, obviously, when you look at um, program strength, obviously, um, how's the youth levels going over there? I believe it's the Berkeley Steelers, I believe. You know, how's the youth program going over there? Yeah, the uh, the future's looking real bright. We're excited. Um, so... Uh, the Steelers varsity this year right now, they I think they're at like 34, 36 kids for the varsity. Not alone. bad. Um, yeah, every level, the JV freshman and flag level, there's at least 30 kids on each level signed up. And the other exciting thing we have is um, Ron Fritz. He's the wrestling coach at the high school, was on my staff previous. Last year was the first year we had the middle school program running again. So um, now we've got the middle school and the Steelers programs running. So we're expecting to keep this, you know, 30, you know, 25, 30 freshman classes running in so that, you know, if we can wind up having three levels year in and year out, it'd be great. Um, obviously, you know, that's, that's very, very good. I think, you know, the youth levels, the future at Berkeley football, you know what I mean? That's It's right up. It's on the upswing. You know what I mean? It's on the oh, upswing. Without, yeah, without it, you know, you're 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 just sticking in place, you know, mm-hmm. you're stuck in in one gear, you know. As we we keep this going, hopefully, uh, hopefully things will brighten up. Um, back to your team. I mean, like, obviously, talk to. I mean, talk to me. Are there any like um surprise players that nobody's talking about? Anybody that um you know has surprised you this camp? I mean, during the off season, like anybody that we haven't heard about, like any any sleepers on the team. Um, yeah, we've had a few actually, um, so far through, uh, some seven on sevens, um, and, uh, in camps, uh, you know, we were, one of them is, uh, John Passan and, uh, you know, we were hoping that he would be able to step in and be that fifth guy on the line for us and we'd help him out as much as possible. But so far through camp, um, you know, he's just, looks great uh you know he's gotten stronger over the off season um as opposed to him being you know a guy that we might have to protect um on the line he he looks like a guy that's going to be able to hold his own and really contribute to uh um you know the the how how we're going to be able to run and, and throw the ball this year uh a couple other guys um Alex Papadopoulos look uh looks like he might be playing some good corner for us this year he was a kid, came out last year, a wrestler, said, hey, I want, you know, wrestler, soccer kid, said, hey, you know, I want to try football. And um, out, of, out of nowhere, you know, this year, good athleticism. He got in his playbook study and knows his coverages. Looks pretty good when we took the boys down to Toledo for the for the camp down there, the 7-on-7 seven seven down there. Um, and then probably the biggest one is uh, Arthur Wool. He was a junior last year. We sent him down to play some JV games. Um, wound up being the leading tackler for the JV, uh, didn't, you know, wound up 
coming up the varsity for more of the season. Um, but uh, the kid has looked great at safety, at receiver, good athlete. Um, just one of those guys that, you know, if Myron or Savad got to come off the field, we're not really losing a step with him out there. Uh, nice, pleasant surprise with those three. Um, obviously, let's talk about your division. Obviously, I mean, the, the division's changed a little bit. I mean, like, you're in the gold this year. You got Avondale. You got um, Royal Oak, Ferndale, Pontiac are in there, are in that division. Um, talk about the division that you're in. I know you've seen these teams before. Um, I know Avondale and Royal Oak have got a lot back. Um, talk about, talk about, talk about each team, you know, in your eyes, you know what I mean? In, in your division, you know? Um, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, Ferndale, um, as far as, as us going to four, four, uh, divisions in the OAA. I know coach Royal and myself have been pushing for this for a few years now, and we're very happy because the trend has always just been, and it happened again last year where, you know, the blue, we've got us, you know, us blue teams. And then eventually, you know, one of the whites would get kicked down and magically they win the blue every year. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, we, we fought and fought and fought and just, it's just kept happening. Um, and now we've got more of the traditional, like you said, the blue. Um, I, I'm not sure what Eric's got coming back, but as always, I tell my boys, you know, he's going to wind up having some big boy linemen. They're going to be physical, you know, pretty probably a pretty good athlete carrying the ball for him. Um, he does a great job over there, a lot of respect for him. And uh, the, the, the seniors, I don't think, have gotten to play Ferndale the past few years due to COVID and, uh, you know, so that'll be a new experience for those guys. Um, Royal Oak, um, uh, seeing some of the stuff online that uh, the new guys doing over there. Coach Justin um, Truitt, yep. Yep, Truitt, yeah. Sounds like, uh, looks like he's got the guys excited over there. Um, you know, I, I think I saw him post something about over 100 kids at one of their camps, which is great. You know, it's, uh, as, as a kid that went to Dondero for uh, most of some of my high school, uh, it's nice to see Royal Oak, you know, getting getting kids out and getting uh, guys excited about football. That's our homecoming game this year, so that should be a fun, exciting one. Hopefully keep the uh, the Catalpa Lexington sign uh, at home where it belongs this year. Yeah, um, I like that trophy. I, I think I've seen that trophy. I mean, like, it looked really, really nice. I mean, like, you know, you used to have the um, – the um, Woodward slab, you know what I mean? Now you have you have the sign, the Lexington Catalpa. I mean, that's a nice little. That's a nice trophy. I really like that trophy. Thanks. Yeah, no, I called called in the favor uh, over at the Royal Oak DPS, and uh, they uh, they made it up for us. And um, it's a nice nice little thing. I hope that we can have stick around for a while. That that curb, man. We were worried someone's gonna break their foot one day if somebody dropped that thing. I think it was heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, you know, the, the rest of the league, Pontiac, um, I'm loving seeing what's going on over there, what Ken's doing with those guys. Um, you know, he, I talked to him last year after our uh, week nine game, you know, and he's talking about building the purple wall, trying to keep Pontiac kids in Pontiac and keep them in that program. And he's a guy that really cares about that city, that high school, those kids. And, uh, I'm hoping that they, you know, get some success going this year and and slowly build this thing up. Uh, I I think they're going to hopefully get a win or two this year. It'd be great for the program, be great for Ken and uh, the the entire city there. I'm looking at Pontiac's schedule and I I see three wins there. You know what I mean? I'm not being mean to you. I think think when I looked at their schedule, I said three wins look really possible for them. I mean, like their non-conference looks very manageable. I mean, you played Garden City before. I mean, like I don't think Garden City was as strong. Um, Detroit Osborne looks winnable. Mount Clemens looks man- winnable for them. Um, and they got a new field. You know what I mean? I mean, like, yeah, what- no, we got to play there last year. We, mm-hmm. there was basically a 4th of July fireworks show at halftime. It was really cool and exciting for, uh, to see that for Pontiac. That was awesome. I mean, like, you know, you guys getting to play there. I mean, like, you know, like, um, I noticed, um, I know you weren't their first opponent who played at that new field, but, um, Farmington was, but, um, but pl- how did it feel like playing at that new field Pontiac? Uh, it was awesome. Um, you know, some things weren't done yet, um, but um, you could feel just, you know, the excitement in, in the boys at Pontiac. Um, you know, it's years past when we played Pontiac, uh, you know, scores getting a little out of hand. 
the kids get down on themselves and, and wind up, you know, just, you know, shutting down last year, you know, we got up a little bit on them, but those kids kept fighting, kept going. They were proud to be at that field. They were proud, proud looked like they were proud to play for Ken, um, you know, and it, it, that was huge. You know, we've had times where kids have just, you know, fumbled the ball and walked away from it against Pontiac. And last year didn't matter. They just kept coming and coming and fighting and fighting. It was really cool to see for those guys. And then talk about Avenue. I mean, like, obviously, the Yellow Jackets, I, I, when I look at the gold this year, I mean, like, Avenue could be one of those teams that could really scare people this year. I mean, they were a playoff team last year like you guys. I mean, like, so talk about what Corey Bell is doing over there at Avenue. Yeah, I mean, Corey's doing a great job. Uh, he's got good athletes there. I know uh, um, – Last year they had a, a slot receiver that was, you know, just a sh- little shifty guy who could get open. Um, he does a really good job of finding a way to get the ball into his playmaker's hands. Um, you know, um, I, I'm not sure what their depth's going to look like this year, but just the, the athletes that he gets over there and, and works with and develops, you know, they're always a scary team for us just because you know they they find creative ways of getting the ball in, and like i said in their uh playmakers hands and we always got to be ready for you know that 50 60 yard pop to happen against avondale um you know it's but with the gold i think it just it's going to keep everybody competitive right mm-hmm. so um you know we have our crossovers and everything but you know i i think with avondale us ferndale um you know, uh, Royal Oak. Yep, yeah, Royal Oak. You know, it, it's. I think we. I, I think we'll be good competition. Everyone should be in the race for it, week in, week out, and you know we'll uh, be able to. What one of the actual gold teams will be able to hold a uh, a, a division title this year? That that would be nice. Um, talk about some changes. I mean, I think the playoffs this year are they going more regional this year, or any changes there, or anything? Yeah, they are, um, which will be interesting to see how that matches everything up. Um, I'm not quite sure. I mean, it. Let's let's see where we stand. You know, record wise, um, how that'll affect you know home field and everything else. Uh, just like anything, it's all you know test and and uh, application to see how it goes. You know, I, I've I haven't held my f- feelings on it of let's just let everybody in and see how that plays out because I think it you know gives the guys an extra week of football and lets them have some fun and I, we'll we'll see how the regional alignment goes. I do remember that 2020 year when everybody got in the playoffs. I mean, like that was a really great experience for everybody to get in the playoffs. It was a really different format. I know a lot of states around the country, a lot of teams around the country do it. Um, I mean, like. Do you see the MHA possibly going that route, letting everybody in the playoffs? I, I, I hope they do for you know the for for programs, right? Letting letting teams get in the playoffs and see what happens, you know, giving them that experience. I, I, I hope it goes that way financially. I think it makes a whole bunch of sense for mm-hmm. the MHSA. Um, you know, even if we go to an eight game schedule for regular season, it might hurt some, some schools losing a home game here and there, but, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I hope after this year, they'll, uh, be able to, uh, you know, look at it and and see the benefits of it and Mm -hmm. make the change going into next year. Um, let's talk about your non-conference. Obviously, um, you got Milan to open up the year. Then you got your crossover games. Um, talk about you know your um, those games, especially open up with Milan. It'll be a really interesting game for you guys going up against them. Yeah, it uh, it should be a good matchup. Um, I know they lost a decent amount last year from their senior class. Um, their quarterback from last year uh, committed to Eastern. Um, you know, they're a team that wants to spread you out and run a bunch of tray and, uh, uh, two G trap, you know, they, they're looking to run the ball. Um, they'll, they'll, they'll show you a pass and then, and then try to just, you know, take it right up the middle on you. Um, but I think we match up well with our team speed, our line. Um, you know, I, I saw one of, uh, I saw one of the guys that, uh, at an Eastern camp and talked to him and uh, asked him, you know, Hey, is coach moving you to quarterback? And he said, yeah, dad, the dad immediately said, Hey, you're not supposed to tell him that. So, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I got a little insight on, uh, on Milan. That's uh, good. Yeah. But I think, I think it gives us a good opponent to start off the year. Um, 
you know, and the the thing I like most about it is it's a physical team, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like they are they're coming to you know run the ball at us, which most of the the gold does. So it gives us a a good look of what we should be expecting week in week out of the gold is you know physical power football um, that, uh, that that should get us ready. Talk about your crossover games. Obviously, um, you know they they look really interesting. The crossover games. I think you got both Birmingham schools. I think you got Gross and Seaholm on the schedule. I believe. Yep. Um, so we uh, we also scheduled Athens for week two. That should be interesting going against Coach Tom Cook over there and those crew over at Troy Athens. Yep. Yeah. It's, I mean, we've had some pretty good games with Athens the past two years. Luckily, we've come out away on top. But again, another opponent that plays us tough and tight. Um, it's you know something again we should be tested with those guys and another team that's normally got a big boy running back and, and they like to you know run the ball at us a little bit. Um, Groves and Seaholm, that'll be uh, those will be interesting ones. Um, you know I know with the crossover we were gonna get a blue team no matter what, so we got uh, Seaholm and then. Uh, uh, the way that they uh, described it to me was we got Groves because we, we were the top of what is now the, the gold from last mm-hmm. year. Yep. So we got that fun crossover. But it, the nice thing is we're probably if, we're probably going to see those teams in the playoffs anyways. Yes. So we may as well get a crack at them. You know, if this is what we got to do to get us four divisions, then so mm-hmm. be it. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see where we sit with some pretty good competition that, uh, you know, Seaholm was what, three years ago they were in the state semifinals? Yes. And, you know, Groves is always a contender, so it, it gives us a good idea of where we're at and, and what we'll need to do to be ready and, um, you know, hopefully take a good playoff run. And when you look at, obviously, when you look at, um, that schedule, I mean, like, you know, see home, of course, seeing a team that runs the veer, obviously it's a, it's an offense that you haven't gone up against, you know what I mean? So talk about having to go up against a, a team that runs a veer like see home does. So luckily um, for us, um, you know, it's uh, coaching, coaching under Sakura for those few years, mm-hmm. um, you know, have a pretty good understanding of the veer and, uh, Try to understand what what's going on. Um, I'm turning over the defense this year to uh, my D line coach, Mike Winborn. Um, mm-hmm. He's worked his butt off, and uh, you know when I was uh, when I was in Texas with my daughter, where with her uh, leukemia treatments, he took over and ran everything, and was doing great for the program. And he's deserved the nod. He's a guy that played in Sakura's system and understands Veer and what we need to do to stop it. And I, 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 no one likes going up against the Veer, but I, I would rather uh, have some experience in the system going up against it than uh, coming in fresh and not seeing that offense in years. Mm-hmm. Before I let you go, Coach, um, your expectations this year. I know there's a lot of expectations at Berkeley this year um, with the program that you've done. I mean, like you've, you know, I mean, like especially in that area, especially in the area there. Um, what are your expectations this year for Berkeley football? Uh, same thing they are every year. I, I want to win our league. Um, Berkeley's never won a league title in football. Um, and I, I, I want to be able to put a banner up in the gym for us for winning, for winning an OAA league. Um, you know, after that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look at it and see what we can do. But the first and most attainable goal that we can get is win our league. And then after that, we can shift and make moves from there. Yep. Um, Berkeley coach Sean Shields, um, thank you for joining us today here on the podcast this week. Um, wish you guys the best of luck. Can't wait to see you on Media Day, Media Day week. Awesome. Yep. Take Thanks, care. Sammy. You take, as well. Yep. God bless. Bye. Yep. Okay, that was Berkeley coach Sean Shields um, on the pod this week. Here, of course, um, a lot of a lot when you look at what the Bears this year. Um, a lot of expectations, a lot of excitement surrounding Berkeley. Um, they're going to be a good team. I, I really think Berkeley is going to be a really good team this year. Um, despite, you know, the loss that they had last year. Um, I, I, I'm really, really high on this team. I really am. So that's my take here. Um, hope they have a coach coming next week. We'll talk about, um, you know, we'll talk, we'll talk about his team, you know, coming up and heading in the season, but great to have Berkeley coach Sean Shields here on the pod this week. Um, 
talking talking football and everything. Um, let's go now from football. Let's go to boys basketball. Obviously, the big story around basketball is Bloomfield Hills have a, has a new coach, and um, obviously, when you look at obviously, when you look at Bloomfield Hills, I mean, like um, you know, Phil Kirshen was there for a while. I mean, like and then he stepped down back in April. Um, so Bloomfield Hills went with Brian Canfield as the new head coach. Um, Canfield, of course, we know. He, we know about the um, – he had his sons play at Bloomfield Hills as well. Um, he's a principal at um, Schroeder Elementary School in Troy. He has a very strong basketball IQ, um, very strong basketball background. Um, when you look at Bloomfield Hills, I mean, the hire – to me, this is a – I think I like this hire for a couple reasons. I mean, like, one, he knows the system. Two, he knows what – um. Bloopy Hills has coming back. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at the Blackhawks, um, you do return a very good player. I know Adam Titch, has some really good players in DJ Lee, CJ Jackson, Ahmad Taylor, um, Henry Jackson, and Brandon Noellen. All of them are coming back. Um, then you have program strength as well. I mean, like, I mean, like, when you look at Bloopy Hills, um, you know, they have, they've, they've shared the white the last two years, um, with, um, you know, respectively with Adams and Stony Creek and then Lake Orion last year. And in Bloom Bay Hills, you know, I'm a little surprised that this team is not in the red this year, considering the success that they've had. And you have a very talented player who could be a Mr. Basketball candidate, Noah Adamchich. Um, so I'm very curious to see how, you know, that Bloom Bay Hills does when they adjust, when they adjust. And I think that's going to be the key. I mean, like, when you look at the Blackhawks this year, um, they should be good. I mean, they're going to be good. That's not a question. Um, you do return some key players, um, um, obviously. So, Bloomfield Hills, to me, looks like a team that they should be in the mix. They should be in the conversation. Um, I think when you look at Bloomfield Hills, I mean, like, clearly... I mean, like, they're going to be in that conversation for the for the league title. I mean, obviously, you look at Troy as well. I think Troy is another one to watch, considering who they got back. Um, but when I look at when I look at it here, I think that um, you know, the hire of Canfield, um, it makes sense. I mean, like it. I mean, I've heard from sources it's a great hire, and it is. Um, you know, obviously, you know, program strength. I'm curious to see how Canfield handles this program um, inside and out. I think that's going to be something to really keep an eye on. Um, their district is absolutely brutal. Um, of course, the boys' district, districts did come out for basketball. Not a lot of changes, though, in the district um, for Bloomfield Hills. Of course, they do host their district, but they have the same teams that were in there last year, like Orchard Lake, St. Mary's. Birmingham Brother Rice, West Bloomfield, Groves, and Seaholm are in there, and that's going to be really difficult for Bloomfield Hills. Now, yes, they could be a dark horse candidate, but West Bloomfield can as well. Um, can this team match up to the Catholic League? That's the big question. People look at Bloomfield Hills and say, okay, I mean, like, you have home court. You should, I mean, like, you should match up with the Catholic League. I mean, Orchard Lake St. Mary's is not the same team that they were last year. Birmingham Brother Rice is going to likely probably be the team to beat, I think. Um, even though I have St. Mary's favored, because a lot of that's because of Trey McKinney. But I think when you look at Birmingham Brother Rice, they're going to be a team to beat. Uh, I think they're the team to beat. they got a lot of experience coming back. I know Ricky Palmer very well. Um, they're going to be really interesting to keep an eye on um, going forward. And Bloomfield Hills, they have that dark horse mentality. If they can... If they can, you know, I think they could give both Catholic League teams problems. I really do. But I'm very curious to see how Canfield does the schedule, the non-conference. I am very, also very curious to see how, um, how Bloopy Hills, um, you know, how they, um, you know, how they're going to be. There's going to be a transition period. And that transition period has to happen during the season. And that's going to be the challenge for, Canfield and the Bloomby Hills players, particularly experienced players, um, to look at going forward. And I think that's going to be the key going forward for Bloomfield Hills is can the players and Canfield adjust to one another 
And, you know, and obviously, how is the system going to look? I mean, that's the key for Bloomfield Hills this season. Um, they're going to be one of the favorites in the white. Um, they should be the favorite in the white. Um, Troy will be right there in the mix, um, you know, as well. So that's something to really, really watch for going forward. So interesting hire for Bloomfield Hills. I like the hire with Canfield. Um, makes a lot of sense. The only downside to that i looked at the mha website and they put canfield's name on the girls page i'm going like what i mean like that that doesn't make any sense i mean like so so i went and did my sources and talked my sources and they told me he was confirming he was the boys coach over at Boopy hill so Boopy hills girls basketball players i mean like you're fine relax you know what i mean everything will be fine you know what i mean so but Boopy hills i think it's gonna be very good um both boys and girls basketball this year. The girls under the tutelage of Coach Kristen Massey. Um, I think they're going to be very good in the blue this year. Um, on the boys' side, the boys, I think they're going to be very, very good um, um, this year. So we're going to keep an eye on it here. Of course, um, Bloompy Hills having their new coach. And it would be very interesting to see what happens in the next few months. I mean, like with Bloompy Hills. Um, let's go to the districts. Obviously, you know, there are a couple districts released, um, during the, um, I do want to bring up the, um, volleyball, the soccer, the, the, um, volleyball districts. They just came out. Um, um, we're going to break down those, um, also break down the soccer districts. The basketball districts will probably do sometime next week. We'll break those down. Um, I mean, we mentioned a little bit, I mean, like if, all the districts being posted and released, they're on my blog, and I'm sagging up by 4650 at blogspot.com. If you want to take a look at them, I will also post a link on it on the O1 TV webpage, O1 TV website as well. So I will post that link as well. Um, let's break down the volleyball districts. Of course, volleyball coming up in fall. Um, you got District 18 at Farm Tales Mercy. You got Farmington, A&T, Mercy, Livoni, Stevenson, Henry Ford. Um, don't think this is a very strong district. I think that, um, I think Mercy has to be the favorite. Home court, everything. Um, Livoni Stevenson could be a challenge. So that's something to really watch for. Um, but I just don't see anybody touching Lord of Vogel's team at home. I just don't see anybody touching them. Uh, District 21 at Berkeley. We talked, I talked to Coach Shields earlier about, um, Berkeley's volleyball program. Um, they won a district title last year and they get to host a district, um, you know, with Royal Oak, Oak Park, um, Detroit Renaissance, and Warren Mott. Um, I think this could be Berkeley, Detroit Renaissance Part 3. I think Berkeley's much better this year. Um, they're well coached. Um, I I really like the Bears here in this region. I, I just think they're going to do very, very well. They're going to do, I think they're going to be a team to watch. I mean, like, so we'll see what happens there going forward. I really like this Berkeley team. Detroit Renaissance could. Um, Warren Mott Royal could be sleepers, but I'm looking at this district likely going to be Berkeley, Detroit Renaissance part three district 23 at Grosse Point North. Of course, Harper Woods is now in division one for, for, um, all sports except football. They're in division two. Um, you got Harper Woods, both Grosse Points, North and South, Hantramic and St. Clair Shores Lakeview. Um, this is going to be a tough one for Harper Woods. Um, I really think that Lakeview's the favorite in this district. Obviously, Gross Point North is next. Um, then it's Gross Point South. Um, like I said, it's going to be very tough. I think, I think it's going to be very interesting, to say the least. I mean, like for Harper Woods in that district. Uh, District 25 at Bloomby Hills. You got Bloomby Hills, Grove, Seaholm, North Farmington, and then you have the defending Division One state champion, Birmingham Mary Mustangs. Um... Yeah, I uh, Birmingham Marion does remind me of the Tampa Bay Lightning. I mean, you know, but then again, of course, we know Tampa Bay, of course, last year, I mean, this year went to Stanley Cup Finals, third straight year, but lost to Colorado in the Stanley Cup Finals. Of course, my brother's very happy about that. So just want to let you know he's an Avalanche fan. Um, you know, so, and of course, I'm a Dallas Stars fan, as everybody knows, um, if you go on Twitter. Um, but, um... Birmingham Marion does remind me of the Lightning. Um, they are they're they're a sleeper. You know they're they're solid. They're a very good team. Um, you know, take that. Um, I I think they're I think they could be a sleeper for Dynasty. That's what I think they could be. 
sleeper for a dynasty. We'll see. Um, see home, I think, is going to be their toughest challenger. Um, I know Coach Gambone family very well. I know Heather and um, Jason, um, both of them very well. I think they're going to be really good um, this year. I think Seahome will be really good. Um, Groves could be a dark horse. Um, North Farmington could be a dark horse. Um, you know, obviously, when you look at what the Raiders have under Coach Michael Love, um, and then you have, of course, Moon Bay Hills. They're always well coached. Um, so, but when I look at this district, I still think it's it's um, Bloom Bay, it's Birmingham Marion's district to lose at Bloom Bay Hills. Um, so we'll see what happens there in that district. Um, district twenty six at Troy. You got Troy, Troy, Athens, Abbeville, Rochester, Adams, and Stony Creek. Um, this is interesting because you got Troy, you got Stony Creek in here. Two proven volleyball powers. Adams, I'm really high on. I really like that Adams team that they have. Um, Troy, Athens, they're always a sleeper. And then Avondale, you know what I mean? They're always a, they're always solid. So this is a good district here. Um, I still think Adams is the favorite, but keep an eye on Ross Talbot's team at Stony Creek. Troy's another one to watch as well. Um, it's basically a pick em district. Um, that's how I'm viewing that district over there um, at Troy with the, um, you know, over there. Um, District 31 at Clarkson. You got Clarkston, Lake Orion, Oxford, Pontiac, Kettering, and Mott. Um, you know, to me, this looks like this could be a Clark. I think this could be a, this district could either be painted in green and white or blue and gold. Um, Clarkson has to be the favorite considering what happened to them last year. Um, they were upset in the district final by Lakeland. Lake Orion lost a lot of talent from a year ago. Very curious to see how that they're going to handle things. Oxford's a dark horse team to watch um, as well. Um, they have Rachel Townsend coming back for them. Um, very curious to see what happens with them. I think, you know, but this district looks like, to me, it looks like this is Clarkson's district to lose. Um, so really interesting to see what happens there. Um, district 32 at the black top at West Bloomfield. They got West Bloomfield, Milford, Lakeland, Wall Lake Central, Wall Lake Northern, Wall Lake Western. Um, Lakeland's got to be the favorite there in that district. Uh, West Bloom is a sleeper. Um, Wall Lake Central's next in line. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens there. Um, but I just think Lakeland, with the team they have, I think they're going to be really interesting to watch um, going forward there. Um, District 54 at Hazel Park. You got Ferndale, Ferndale University, Hazel Park, Warren Fitzgerald, Warren Lincoln. Ferndale's got to be the favorite in this district. Um, Hazel Park's going to be really interesting. Ferndale University is a sleeper. I still think it's a two-team district between Ferndale and Hazel Park. Um, Hazel Park has had some success recently. Um, Ferndale's had um, Ferndale, we know, of course, playing in the um, blue division. That's going to be really interesting to see what happens there with them. So that's my thoughts and my take on the volleyball districts there. Um, the soccer districts came out as well. Um, these are districts to be decided. Um, but the districts are really interesting. I mean, soccer, you got... Clarkston, Oxford, Davison, Flushing, Grand Blank, Lapeer, and Shorts Creek in one district. Um, when I look at this district, um, Grand Blank's always been the proven power. Clarkston, of course, we know they're going to be very good. Um, Oxford's a dark horse to see. Um, I mean, like, I think it's a three-team race in that district. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens going forward there in that district. So I'm curious to see what happens there. Um, District 7, you got Seahome, Bloomfield Hills, Farmington, North Farmington, West Bloomfield, Livonia Stevenson, and Waterford Mott. Um, Seahome and Livonia Stevenson should get the top two seeds in that district. Um, very curious to see what happens there in that one. Um, district 14, um, we got Berkeley Groves, Oak Park, Royal Oak, Troy, Troy Athens, and UD Jesuit. Um, I think Troy Athens, Berkeley are going to be really interesting to watch. Troy's a sleeper. Um, I mean, Groves is another sleeper in that district as well. I think they're the wild card. Um, so it'll be something to really watch for in that in that um in that district. Um, district 15. Um, you got Lake Orion, Rochester, Adams, Stony Creek, Romeo, Utica, Utica Eisenhower. This is a real interesting district here. Um, Obviously, you got three Rochester schools being the favorite here. Utica Eisenhower is always solid. Lake Orion's always been a sleeper. Um, I think it's anybody's district. Um, 
to win that one. I think it'll be very interesting to see what happens there going forward um, in that district. So very curious to see how that one's going to look. Over there, um, in the District 25, you got Ferndale, Warren, Fitzgerald, Growth Point North, Detroit Renaissance, Hamtramck, East Point, and St. Clair Shores, Salt Lake. Um, Growth Point North should be the favorite in that district, followed by Ferndale. Um, and then, you know, I think, you know, St. Clair Shores, um, Salt Lake's a wild card. Um, I just don't really see anybody else in that district really pushing um, the top two, maybe the top three in that district um and then district 27 um you got avondale pontiac waterford cuttering Birmingham brother rice bluebeos cranbrook kingwood madison Heights, lampier and orchard lake st mary's um this one's interesting because it's a top district um to say the least i mean like you know i think when you look at this district um brother brother rice has to be the early favorite Considering, you know, I think they won a state title last year in soccer in Division Two. Um, you know, they, yeah, they did make the Division Two state finals last season. Cranbrook Kingswood, I mean, they're another solid team. They won another shot. I mean, like so. And then you have Waterford Kettering comes down to Division One. Um, you know, I'm very curious to see Waterford Kettering how they do because going down from Division One to Division Two in soccer, it's I'm not sure how it. It really was figured out why Waterford Kettering was in Division Two for soccer, um, even though most of their sports are in Division One for other sports. But I'm very curious to see how um how that um that worked out, considering you know where um considering where um they've been. I mean, like obviously in the Lakes Valley, um, and then you have Avondale and Pontiac. Both those teams are really solid teams. Um, Avondale, of course, has really been getting better, improving. Pontiac is another team that's been really playing really well as well. Um, so when you really look at it here, I mean, like, I think when you look at Pontiac, um, you know, and Avondale, I think they, they could be sleepers in that district. I, I really do. So my final thoughts on the softball, on, on the, um, on the, um, soccer, boy soccer and, um, Volleyball districts, I mean, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. I mean, there's a lot of storylines. Obviously, soccer always been really strong. Obviously, Troy Athens being the powerhouse there. Um, volleyball, as of late, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, last year, Lake Orion was the, um, was the, um, made it to the regional finals. Um, Berkeley was a regional finalist team as well last year. Um. I really think, you know, when you look at volleyball this year, um, Clarkston is going to likely be the team that stands out because of who they got back. Um, I think the Wolves could be a team that could do some damage this year. Um, Berkeley's another one I'm really high on this year. I really like what Berkeley's done. Um, I think when you look at the Bears, I mean, like, to me, I mean, like, it, for Berkeley, it just it comes down to, okay, where are they going to be at? I mean, like, I, I really like I really like what Berkeley's done. Um, there's a lot of high upside surrounding the Bears this year, um, this upcoming fall. I mean, like, um, so I'm very curious to see what happens there going forward. Um, obviously, we talked the basketball districts. Um, we're going to break those down more in the depth next week. Um, some really interesting ones here, of course, when you look at the, um, the districts for basketball. Um, we're going to break those down more next week, but I can give you like an early, early prelude of it here. The bo I mean, when you look at the boys districts, they're pretty much, they're pretty much the same. I mean, like you look at obviously district six at Clarkston, um, you, it's, it's virtually the same as last year. Um, you know, you, you're looking at more and more like it's going to likely be a Clarkston water for my district final there. Um, early indicator, but you know, I'll go more in depth on that next week. Um, district number, um, district, district five, it's the same as last year. Um, you know, Yuka Eisenhower's got a lot coming back. Um, Stony Creek's got a new coach, Jeff Owen. Um, I mean, like, um, Rochester, well coached under coach, um, Nick Abola, Adams under Jared Thomas, Romeo under Marv Cushingberry, Lake Orion, of course, will be very interesting to keep an eye on this year under coach Jose Andrades. Um, and then you look at District 4, Grand Blanket's virtually the same as last year. 
Um, Oxford's in the district with Grand Blank, Davison, Lapierre, Flint, Kirsten. I'm very curious to see with Grand Blank how Tory Jackson's going to fill that role over there at Grand Blank. I mean, I've heard a lot about Davison as well. I mean, like, they're going to be really interesting to keep an eye on. Um, but the guy I really want to know is Dan Brown's reaction. I really want to hear his reaction to the district over at um, Grand Blank. So I'm very curious to see how his reaction is going to be. Um, District 25 at Berkeley, of course. Um, you got Berkeley, Royal Oak, Oak Park, Detroit. It's the same as last year. Um, I talked to Coach Joe Sermo about this um, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, he's happy he's hosting the district, but it's not happy it's the same teams. I mean, like, obviously, um, you know, you got... I'm curious to see how, um, how that district is going to be like, especially at the... Um, in Berkeley's gym, of course. Really nice gym, by the way. You know, I really like Berkeley's gym. I mean, really do. I mean, I'm curious to see how... But when I look at the teams in there, UD Jesuit stands out, obviously. They, they're going to be favored. Detroit Renaissance, another one to watch. Um... District 26 at North Farmington. You got North Farmington joining us. You got North Farmington, Farmington, Southfield, Arts and Tech, Troy Henry Ford, and Lavoni Stevenson. Troy Henry Ford could give North Farmington problems. That's going to be the inter interesting storyline. We'll see how that goes. We really will. Um, And then you have Bloomfield Hills, District 27. You got Bloomfield Hills, Grove, Seaholm, West Bloomfield, Birmingham Brother Rice, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's. Um, Same district we talked earlier about the... um. You know, when the um when we did the um for new coach Brian Canfield, his, his team's the dark horse sleeper team, West Bluefield's another one to watch. Um he is can one of those teams knock off the Catholic League. Um curious to see what happens there going forward there. Um and then you have District twenty eight, Lavon at Sterling High Stevens. This is a whole new district here. You got Troy, Troy Athens, Sterling High Stevens and Utica Ford and Utica. Um Troy is the favorite in that district, Sterling High Stevenson. Should challenge Troy Athens, a sleeper. Um, and then you have District 59. This is to be decided um, to be announced. And this is a tough district here. I really think it's going to be a really interesting district here. you got Ferndale, Ferndale U, Hazel Park, Detroit Lincoln King Academy, Detroit Redford. This is a very tough district. I mean, Lincoln King is a very good team. Um, like I said, we'll go more in depth with these districts next week. Um but it is, this one's going to be a tough district for Ferndale. It'll be really interesting to see what happens there. And then District 30 at Gross Point North. You got Harper Woods, Gross Point North, Gross Point South, Roseville, St. Clair Shores, Lakeview. Um, Harper Woods will have a time in this district. I, I really think they're going to have a really tough time in this district. Um, so let's see what happens going forward there. Um, on the girls' side, um, it is different here. District 4, um, you got Oxford, Grand Blank, Lapeer, Davison, Holly. That's at Lapeer. I'm curious to see what happens here. I think Oxford's got a chance at this one. You know, Grand Blank's going to be really interesting to keep an eye on there. Um, District 5 at Rochester, you got, it's the same teams except Lake Orient's out. Um, you got Rochester, Stony Creek, Adams, Romeo, Utica, Eisenhower. Um, curious to see where Romeo goes with their coaching search. Um, Rochester should be the favorite in that district. Stony Creek will be right there in the mix. Um, Utica, Eisenhower's a sleeper. They got a lot back. Um, so I'm curious to see how that's going to go. Um, District 6 at Clarkston. This is where Lake Orion was put in with Pontiac, Waterford Cuttering, Waterford Mott. Um, I think this is a two-team district between Clarkston and Lake Orion. Um, I really do. When you look at the, um, Dragons and the Wolves, that, that looks to me like it's a two-team district. Um, District 7 at Lakeland. You have the defending Division 1 state champion West Bluefield in here. You got Lakeland. And then Wall Lake Northern, Wall Lake Central, Wall Lake Western. This district is tough. This district is going to be as tough as you think. I mean, like, it's going to be tough. I mean, like, but I think West Bloomfield's got just enough firepower, I think, to get by here. I think Lakeland, I think Wall Lake Northern will give some problems. Wall Lake Central will give some problems as well. Lakeland is a young team. Um, they made the regional last year. So I'm curious to see what happens there in that district. But I think West Bloomfield really is the one that really stands out. Um, District 25 at Berkeley, you got Berkeley, Oak Park, Royal Oak, Detroit Mumford, Detroit Renaissance. Detroit Renaissance right now looks like the favorite, but keep an eye on Berkeley. I think Berkeley, I mean, even though they have no Ashley Loon, um, she's graduated. But I'm curious to see how, and Detroit Renaissance is loaded this year with proven talent on that team. Um, so I'm curious to see what happens there. Um, 
in that district. Um, district 26 at North Farmington, you got North Farmington, Farmington, A&T, Five Tails Mercy, Detroit Henry Ford, Livonia Stevenson. Um, to me, this looks like it's a North Farmington versus um, Detroit versus Mercy district final. Um, I think it'll be very interesting. I think Mercy's the favorite right now, but don't count out North Farmington. Um, they got a lot of talent back. Um, district 27 at Birmingham, Marion. You got Grove, Seahome, Bloomby Hills, Troy, and Birmingham, Marion. Of course, Troy coming in this district is very interesting. Um, Birmingham, Marion, we know they got a new coach. Um, and um, they got a new coach. Um, of course, and uh, Michelle Lindsay taking over that program. Very curious to see what happens there. Um, I think, you know, you got a player at Mackenzie Swanson on that team. I'm curious to see what happens there in that district there. But like I said, I'm going to break that district more down next week. Um, district 28 at Avondale. You got Avondale, Troy, Athens, Sterling Heights, Stevenson, Utica, Utica, Ford. I'm really, I really like what Vance Kirkwood's done at Sterling Heights, Stevenson. I mean, it's going to be a second year there, but I really like what he's done there. I mean, like, I think he's going to be really good. Utica, Ford's going to be solid as well. Can't ever count out Utica. Um, then you have Troy Athens as well. I mean, Stacey Klump's done a really nice job with that program. Um, I think Troy Athens is a team to really watch for in that district. And then Avondale, you know, they, they're they they're replacing some key players. I mean, like, I'm curious to see where Avondale goes um, heading into next year. And then District 30, you have Harper Woods, Gross Point North, Gross Point South, St. Coast Shores, Lakeview, and Roseville. Um, Gross Point North is going to be very good. I mean, there's they're loaded. I mean, like, I really like what Gross Point North has. St. Clair Shores Lakeview is another one I'm really high on as well. Um, if you're Harper Woods, this is going to be a really tough district for you, for Coach Paul Allen. And then you have Gross Point South has been a power. Um, Roseville is always solid. But if you're – but it would be really tough, I think, for Harper Woods, especially having to deal with Gross Point um, North and um, St. Clair Shores Lakeview. And then – the last district we're going to talk to is District 58 to Hazel Park. You got Ferndale, Ferndale University, Hazel Park, Warren, Lincoln, Warren, Fitzgerald. Um, Ferndale University, I think, is going to be the favorite in that district because of the experience. Hazel Park's another team to watch. Uh, Dakota Ogles has done a really nice job of that program over there at Hazel Park. Um, of course, Hazel Park now a member of the MAC. Used to be in the way, but curious to see what happens there going forward there. Um, but like I said, we're going to break down these districts next week here. Um, a lot to, um, to digest, obviously to break these districts down. Um, I will be very curious to see what happens. Um, you know, as we head in later on during the week, um, you know, during the week. So when you look at obviously this, the news this week around the league, of course, this is the MHA's dead periods this week. I mean, like, so, so I'm very curious to see what happens going forward. Um, final thoughts this week, obviously, um, you know, we'll see what happens going forward. Um, very curious to see what happens going forward. So I'd like to thank, um, Berkeley coach, Berkeley football coach, John Shields for being on the podcast this week. Um, talking about his team, um, looking forward to the, um, 20, um, 22 football season. Very curious to see what happens. Hope we have a coach come on next week. We'll chat, um, about their respect the team going forward. Um, we'll see what happens going forward. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Um, make sure you stay tuned to the blog at 4650 at blogspot.com for latest information surrounding um, OA sports. Also, we're keeping an eye on the um, boys' basketball coaching search at Southfield Arts and Tech. Um, so I'm very curious to see what happens there. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Um, Sammy Tumini here. Um, take care. God bless, and I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care, and see you next week. God bless all.